AutoLine Spotlight is presented by Ally. Do it right. On this episode, dealer strategies for managing used car inventory and remarketing. I want to thank you for joining us on this special edition of AutoLine. We call it AutoLine Spotlight because we're putting the spotlight on automotive retailers. Today's discussion is all going to be about smart auctions and online marketing. Joining us for this discussion today are George Glassman. He's the principal for the Glassman Automotive Group, which includes Subaru, Genesis, Hyundai, and Kia. Steve Capusta is with uh, Ally, and it's great to have him here as well as my colleague, Steve Finley, a senior editor with Ward's Auto. And I want to thank you all for joining us here today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's throw this right out to you, George. We'll start with it. Uh, the market seems to be glutted with vehicles right now. There are very high levels of inventory throughout the industry. On a macro level, how do you deal with something like that? Well, it truly isn't our problem currently, it's the manufacturers who are now taking all these cars back. What I'm not sure I fully understand is, is it would seem to me that these cars, this issue, the problem that they're running into could be remedied by coming up with a program that would provide a, another avenue for people to then lease these, these used cars that are coming back off lease for another three years. And I think that would really be a, a good avenue. I know Ally's uh, done a little bit of that, but I think that there's a huge opportunity there. Do you see it that way, Steve? No, I, I agree. I think um, used leasing has some interesting opportunities. I think with the way it happens on the automotive side, you know, from the manufacturer's perspective, I think, you know, they need to be a part of it. Um, you know, some type of incentive, some type of association there, but I think there's some really exciting opportunities, especially as you take a look at the product today and, um, you know, the life cycle and, and how long, you know, vehicles run now. I think, um, you know, the first couple, two, three years of a vehicle on the road today is, is just the infancy. And, and we have a second opportunity, second round on the used leasing side. Don't you think that would cure up that glut? I think so. Well, used car leasing as a proposition has been around for a long time. Dave Ruggles, who's a friend of mine in the industry, has beaten that drum for a, a, about 10 years, 15 years now. The obstacle seems to be the residuals, you know, going out that far with the residuals and then building a lease deal on that. Is that surmountable? Yeah, you know, um, that, that obviously is the biggest obstacle in, in the way the manufacturers today go to market leasing on the new car side. There's so much incentive on the front end, it's difficult to get the comparable payment on the second lease or the used lease. So I think, you know, if together, um, you know, the manufacturers worked with, you know, finance opportunities, their captives, et cetera, there's ways to get there. Um, the other thing is, is as you take a look at the cycle of used cars and, and how much we have in the marketplace, that's going to change it as well. So, you know, to the extent that there's lower supplies and higher demands in different areas, you can strategically lease as well, not necessarily across the entire portfolio. Well, you're getting waves and waves of uh, off-lease vehicles coming back. us the 3.5 million this year, and it's going to be more next year. And you had talked once, Steve, about. Uh, creative ways to remarket these vehicles. Uh, uh, discuss some of those creative ways. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, the, the things that we've been doing on our end, um, you know, for the last decade or so is we've been leveraging the internet quite a bit. And, um, you know, as, as we went through, um, you know, some tough times in, in 08, 09, that internet opportunity presented um, a really exciting um, opportunity for us and our dealer um, customers and partners because, you know, they were trying to be as efficient as possible in garnering and, and picking up used vehicles. And, you know, the internet took a lot of this travel, a lot of this expense, a lot of this being away from the business, um, right back into the business. So, you know, we, um, we sat um, for a long time, spent a lot of time with our dealer customers, um, you know, George and his team and, and other folks in the industry and said, hey, what do you, what do you need to be more efficient? What's going to help you? And, and the biggest resounding response we got was, listen, we need our people that are running the business in the business. So sending my used car manager on the road to the auction, at the airport, in traffic, weather, et cetera, hey, we need them in the dealership putting numbers on cars that are showing up at our dealership. And then when we don't get the right cars, we also need them online trying to find the cars to, to fill the holes um, on the dealer lot. And I think inventory management combined with the technology of the internet and how people are posting cars today, 
the level of detail, et cetera, there's great opportunities um, to be leveraged. Steve mentioned uh, all the cars coming off lease, but we're also seeing the daily rental companies dumping more cars into the market right now. They, they overcard, if you will, if there's such a term. Uh, do you guys see any impact from that? Well, it's affecting the used car prices in a very negative way. It's pushing them down um, to levels that are very difficult to, um, to sustain. It's just the business model is, is somewhat broken, and I think you're seeing a lot of the manufacturers clearly are pulling back from dumping all these cars into the daily rental business. It's just hurting different brands at different times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I would follow on that with, you know, economics 101 works here. Um, the, su the supply and demand thing is, is really obviously important. And, you know, to the extent that there's too many newer used cars coming back, that, that's not so good on the front end and obviously affects the residuals and all the things we talked about. But to the extent that the manufacturers have a delicate, reasonable balance there, the used leasing opportunities, I believe, will present themselves. Well, Steve, you had talked about uh, the inventory management uh, specifically for used car. How has used car management changed over the years? George? Well, it, the technology has clearly taken over in every regard. So from the, the buying to the selling to uh, the posting of cars online, everything now is done online. And um, as Steve mentioned, the ability to display that car and for people to see what is out there before they ever get to the store or to call in uh, has just made it much more transparent. It's, it's, a, it's working the way it's supposed to. Does your used car manager work on gut instinct sometimes or is he strictly no, using No, we, we, use we use a, a lot of the technology that's out there and available, the data that's available uh, so that the inventory turn can be uh, done more efficiently. Um, you know, we, we try to make sure that we're not keeping cars on the lot um, beyond 60 days, so uh, the used cars. And so we're doing whatever we can to reprice the cars to market conditions on almost a weekly basis. And that data is so readily available, it, it has transformed the industry immensely. Yeah, I, I would follow on that. The gut instinct, it's, it's hard to find that these days. Um, you know, there's maybe a few cowboys left. You may not want it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you might not want to catch that one. Um, you know, there may be some independents and stuff that are still doing that, but I think on the franchise side, I mean, you know, these, these guys are, are running some really large um, operations and turn time um, efficiency is important. The technology is so good. I mean, we, we could have a person that just, you know, graduated from high school or graduated from college. They can scan the VIN and get the price on the car. I mean, obviously, they want to walk the car for some condition and stuff, but I mean, they don't need to really have a heck of a lot of education on what's happening day to day in the used car environment to actually put a price on the car. So you must have pretty good sense of confidence in this technology, right? Because in the old days, you would physically inspect it. How do you make sure that the car is really what it's being represented as? How do you verify that? Well, uh, Carfax is obviously one avenue. Um, I think today in the dealership world, uh, you know, we make records readily available if, if customers want to see what the service history is on the car, if we have that history. Um, but certainly Carfax is one avenue for understanding that. And, uh, and most of the manufacturers, um, through their, their different portals, you can see what recalls uh, have or have not been done and uh, you know what may or may not have been done to the car. So it certainly makes it, again, more transparent and certainly better for the consumer. Well, you know, I was talking to an auction guy uh, who was on the cutting edge of online auctions and his dad uh, was a, um, an independent dealer and as this guy was going to this assignment to you know, get online going, his dad said, no dealers are gonna buy a car online. But they do, why do they? Yeah, so, um, so today, you know, from, from the Ally side of things, we sold 5.6 million cars since 2000, just straight online. Um, the, the digital technology, the pictures, the information that's a readily available to the buyer, all the way down to um, you know, vehicle content, build data, et cetera, is amazing, and it's right at your fingertips. So as far as online, um, you know, I, I would say almost everybody in the industry has embraced it in some form or fashion. Um, some are higher and in, in, in dove in deeper than others, but when you take a look at what comes up today on the screen, it, it is truly amazing. 
Yeah, I don't think we're going to wake up tomorrow and um, we're not going to have physical brick and mortar auctions. Um, there's always going to be a place for them. They're changing their business model like many in the auto industry have. But um, from the technology side, you know, you can sit in, at your desk and you can watch the physical auction running via video streaming right at your desk and bid on that car. So there's no reason to leave your desk anymore. You can actually multitask and you can wait for the car and the vehicle you wanted. You can pre-look at those vehicles. You don't have to worry if it's 110 degrees and really hot on the asphalt today or if there's 10 inches of snow. Well, the, uh, the original impediment or perceived impediment was that the dealers want to see that car right. up close well, and personal. One of the benefits today, uh, and I think every auction makes it available, is that for a reasonable fee, we can ask that that car be checked out and the, the, uh, the different auctions will stand behind that and uh, there's avenues for arbitrating it should we get the car and it have damage that we didn't feel that was uh, disclosed properly and so that process is evolving and is also helping out immensely yeah exactly so you have post sale inspection opportunities so after you buy you can get post sale um, inspections and then the other thing is is what's happening on the venues today that the, be the best thing that you can do to create the right environment is stand behind the vehicle so what you find today where you may have not found in the past is when a dealer buys a car and there's something wrong or something that was missed and undisclosed the platform and, and the seller standing up to that. And, and so you're getting a very trusted marketplace. Do you feel that uh, retailers are really using all the resources that they have available, Steve? So I, I, I think it's varying degrees. Um, you know, as George mentioned, this inventory management, um, you know, that is, that's high on folks' lists. Um, you know, we always kind of talk about um, the, the used vehicle as it's not fine wine. Um, they tend to depreciate. So um, vehicle turn and understanding what's moving and what you're able to retail in your area is, is really, really important. So that technology utilization, I think, has made folks very efficient and very effective at their job. Um, you know, they're able to take a look at their profits and their margins and run the business and pull more cars through um, the process than they have before. Um, so you know, that technology, I think, has um, been embraced quite a bit. I think the online auction technology, there's still more people um, that need to embrace. Um, you know, it's going through a change. Um, the millennials, they don't want to go to the auction. Um, but some of the older folks, like you know myself and some others, I mean, they still like kicking tires. And they like getting together with some folks at the auction. So it's transitioning. Um, I think the next five years is going to be really exciting. You know, dealers love leasing. Uh, it, it, it's you know, good way to get somebody in a vehicle. Uh, it's also uh, uh, your customer to lose because you, they're coming back to you. You know when they're going to be coming back or what their cycle is. But uh, some people say there is this point where you don't want to lease too many cars uh, as an industry. What is that point percentage-wise, do you suppose, George? You know, I don't know because Detroit is so heavily a lease market. Um, you know, I, unless someone is driving incredibly high mileage, 25,000 miles a year, 30,000 miles a year, uh, leasing provides that avenue to keep your payment down and get into another car, hopefully uh, before you run into any of those problems that you might find down the road. Um, so I don't know uh, to what degree that mix. Some people are always going to want to buy, um, but once again, that's a, a financial decision that people have to make after consulting with their uh, accountants as to what works best for them. But more and more, at least in our marketplace, we're seeing um, that predominance of leasing and people wanting to get into a, a different car or maybe stay with the same brand three years later. And it, it's, it's working incredibly well. Well, let me ask you, Steve, in a different way. How many waves is too many waves in terms of handling off-lease vehicles coming back as yeah. a remarketer? Yeah, um, so I think from the remarketing side of the um, equation, we can handle it. Um, so, so the industry, it, it's set, it, it can handle it. Um, the, you know, the question is, is price. And then you talk about residual and you talk about you know, potential impacts to brand, image, value, residual value, which recycles back to the front end of the new lease. So that's the delicate balance. Um, you know, I, I would agree with George. I think there's a number of people, um, you know, 
across the country that say, hey, when I buy my car, I'm buying it because I'm just going to drive the heck until the wheels fall off. And there's others that, you know what, in two or three years, I want a new car, and I don't want to worry about the trade-in process. I don't want to worry about any of the other things. I want it to be under warranty. So the percentage probably just, it, it's dependent probably across the country and maybe the manufacturer and the vehicle type. But as long as you have the price right, I, th I think it works. Um, so, and then you let, you know, as, as George mentioned, you let the customer decide, you know, which they prefer. But leasing's really efficient. I mean, for, for the average customer, it is a really efficient way to go. You have a brand new car, you have a fixed payment, and you're really not putting in investing any money after the, the actual lease payment. And, and then you're ready for another lease. And um, as dealers and finance companies, we love that. And that's why I think that if, if those brilliant minds can get together and figure out this simple math equation of how to take that off-lease vehicle and set the residual, which, again, is... There's a lot of history as to what a three-year-old car should be worth with certain mileage, what a six-year-old car should be worth with certain mileage, what a nine-year-old car with certain mileage. So I don't find it to be that difficult. Um, I think it's just a matter of, of whether or not the manufacturers want to make that commitment. I certainly think it would help move these cars out of of everyone's lots very quickly and very efficiently. And again, uh, most of these cars are coming off lease with 36,000 miles, 30,000 miles. Um, they've got a lot of life left to them. And that's why uh, the used car market is so vibrant. But again, when you've got, you gotta avoid this glut of cars because that obviously is gonna affect the pricing. But I find it to be a simple math equation and if somebody wants to sit down and figure it out, I really believe they can get it done. <laughs> okay, well, in the interim then, we'll wait for the OEMs to, to step up and maybe figure out how to, to lease uh, off-lease cars. Uh, what are some of the other tools that you can be using right now? So I, from, from our perspective, I think um, the certification you know, it, it's obviously grown over the years, and that's really, really important. So if, if you're not going to step into the used leasing opportunity um, as an OEM captive, I mean, you have to have a really, really strong certified program. Um, that, that's pretty much second to none. And um, yeah, as George said, I mean, we take a look at these vehicles and how they're manufactured today. they got a lot of life left in them. There's no reason to not have a certified type program out there. And it gives a lot of comfort, um, you know, to, to the consumer. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you real quickly about the uh, the cross listing, the open platform auctions, in which uh, it, it would be sort of a consortium of all the auction houses and companies uh, listing the same vehicles and uh, working together. It's a, a seller's dream. Sure. Um, auctions are, uh, you know, the companies are a little hesitant uh, for a variety of reasons, one of them being branding, uh, sure. frankly. Um, where, where are we with that today? Because it's been talked about. Yeah, so I, I think the, the industry and the platforms have taken the first step, and, and um, you know, we tend to call that cross-listing, um, where you can, as a seller, whether it be a dealer or OEM, um, a captive, a rental car company, you can post the same vehicle um, at the same price with the same photos, et cetera, um, today on, I would say, all three major platforms. So that would be um, you know, Mannheim OVE, Odessa.com, and um, Ally Smart Auction. So today, the way that works, you know, real briefly, is you know, I post my car, it goes up on all three sites, and the first site that gets the initial bid, um, it gets taken down or removed from the other sites, and it bids through the cycle on the remaining site that, that got the first bid. Um, there's been a lot of discussion um, over, over and through the industry, um, you know, maybe the last five years or so, on the dream, which would be, hey, as a seller, you know, why can't I put it on all three sites and have interactive bidding going back and forth be between the sites? Um, number of discussions have been had on that. You know, I, I think Mannheim took a, a, you know, an interesting charge and approach at it um, in, in trying to work through some of the difficulties and, and things associated with it. But I think, you know, for a number of different reasons, um, you know, legally, et cetera, there, there's been some stuff that's held the industry back on that. And, and I think, you know, you mentioned it earlier too, you know, people like the fact that they got a brand and they have a platform and they have a business model. So it's, it's sometimes difficult to, to put those things all together. George, final thoughts on that? Uh, again, we buy cars with regularity from Smart Auction and some of the other auction uh, 
houses that are available. It makes it just so much easier, as Steve was mentioning, to not have to run to the auction in you know, winter weather and 100 degree heat if we get that. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a very efficient way to do it and there are avenues to ensure that the vehicles are as represented. Very good. It works out great. George Glassman, Steve Capusto, Steve Finley, thank you very much for a very interesting discussion. Thank, thank you. you. Who's that? Well, that's Becky from Ally. She helps with everything from auto finance to F&I to pretty much everything else. Oh, and our wacky inflatable guy's broken. We'll do anything, seriously anything, to help your dealership. Ally, do it right.